An anchoring pool is a brackish water pool that's landlocked. There's no connection to the ocean. How the water gets in into the anchoring pool is through the groundwater or uh, freshwater runoff coming in from the land side and seawater percolating through from the ocean side. And there's a mix of the salt and fresh water to form the brackish water environment for the anchoring pools. Anchoring pools basically are, are two basic types. They're basalt or lava type geologically, or what we call um, karst, which are ancient limestone reefs. And the ones on Oahu are made of these ancient limestone reefs. And we're sitting on the biggest karst formation on the island of Oahu, and it's called the Eva Karst. And basically, it's that, like what, it, um, what we're saying, it's made of ancient coral. What's fascinating is that at times, at the, on a low tide, Basically, the pools can be completely dry, and these animals would migrate into the subterranean karst zone, to the cracks and crevices. What they do down there, we have no idea. But the fascinating thing is, when the tide comes up again, the water level increases, and these creatures come out of these cracks and crevices. So somehow they're very unique in that they be able, they are capable of surviving in this very, what we would consider a very harsh environment. These are really unique. Anchoring pools are found worldwide, but the highest concentration is here in the Hawaiian Islands. And it's not just the pools themselves, it's the animals in there. There are about uh, eight shrimp and one species of crab that are so unique to these islands. Uh, some are found nowhere else in the world, and it's, some are just so rare. And we have one that has recently been um, put on the endangered species list, and that's the one on the Big Island called Veteracaris chasiorum. And what we found with our research is that the Opaiula basically uh, can survive without feeding for like 28 days. And that gives them the unique capability of surviving where they are and reproducing where they are. On the other hand, you have the metabetes, which have what we call a planktotrophic um, uh, larval requirement, in which they have to go from the anchoring pool, migrate to the open ocean, and feed on the plankton and the uh, zooplankton that's in the water. And they have to survive in that very harsh environment until they make their way back into the Ankylian pools. And with the restoration effort, we've been able to show that, that both species can survive in this uh, particular habitat. So we're at the Kalailoa unit of the Pearl Harbor National Wildlife Refuge. And this is 37 acres that is designed to protect um, and preserve two endangered plants that are here. And what we did here is to restore the area to a natural, dry coastal ecosystem, which includes these anchoring pools. Um, we were able to restore 12 pools, in, 13 pools, and have a total of 14 here that uh, serve as the largest complex of anchoring pools on Oahu right now. The book, Hawaiian Anchoring Pools, Windows to a Hidden World, what it covers is the research that has started decades ago from um, researchers from the University of Hawaii who've discovered these animals, all the way up to the current researchers who study the DNA of these incredible animals. Uh, it covers a little bit of cultural history, scientific history, life history of these animals. It's considered an um, inkline pond because there's no direct connection to the ocean, but its depth and height varies upon tidal change. Okay. What um, the threats are to this unique habitat and restoration efforts that are currently being used to restore this ecosystem.